Well, now we're going to talk about your build plate. Um, this is actually what the 3D print actually starts on. So uh, what you'll do is uh, as your printer comes down, the extruder and the nozzle will actually start squirting out plastic and go back and forth, and eventually you'll come up with parts uh, that get built on this. I prefer mirrored plates just because they're extremely flat. Uh, they have to be, otherwise you can't actually uh, see yourself. You'll, you'll see ripples and stuff instead of uh, whatever image that you're looking at. And then the other reason is because the metal backing on the back side of it actually heats up the whole material or the whole plate much, much faster and way more evenly than just a, a standard glass plate would. So anyway, uh, heat transfers better and it is flatter, definitely. Um, Trade-off is it's a little more brittle than uh, what they call uh, Pyrex glass or borosilicate glass. Uh, but the, the uh, really great thing is that you can actually purchase the glass that I use. Uh, I, what I did was I actually purchased it through a source that should be you know, pretty, pretty uh, worldwide. Uh, definitely in the United States is very common. Uh, I buy uh, my glass plates from Lowe's uh, you know, uh, home improvement store. And what kind I actually purchase um, is a six pack. This big six pack uh, comes from Lowe's, uh, and basically it is uh, uh, $9, I think, maybe $10 for six of them. So you're actually only paying um, uh, maybe around a dollar, dollar fifty per plate, uh, a little bit more. And uh, uh, it, the truth is, they come in uh, 12 inch by 12 inch, so you actually get six of them uh, with each of them. And the really great thing about Lowe's purchasing it there is that they don't actually charge you for uh, any cut down uh, cost or anything. So it's really, really nice. You know, you go in there, you buy a pack of six of these, and um, for $10, they cut all six of them to the size you need. Now, what size do I use? Um, well, for the Bigfoot printers, as is, there's no cut down required. In fact, if you want to uh, go a little bit bigger to the, get the full 12 and a quarter by 12 and a quarter, then you have to buy. Uh, different mirrored glass and then have it cut down but truthfully a 12 inch by 12 inch it's a pretty big surface area so um, but uh, then for the uh, the vision plus and the vision uh, home team which is just the vision standard printer um, the size I use uh, in the United States we call it seven and seven eighths inch by eight and three eighths inch uh, but it's also equivalent to 200 millimeter by 213 millimeters. And the reason for that is that's what size will actually fit within the uh, screws, uh, the heads of the screws on the, um, uh, on the heated build plate. Uh, the other good news about it, the reason that I buy that size plate, originally I started off with thinner mirror glass. Um, it transfers just marginally better uh, heat. Uh, but the trade-off is that the heads of the screws that hold the heat bed on are actually slightly taller than that. So there's a risk that you could actually um, run your nozzle into uh, one of those screws as you're um, coming off the plate. And so I switched to this uh, slightly thicker. It's pretty nice. Um, I have printed uh, thousands of hours on these and they just work really good. Um, how, what will you use? Well. If you're printing PLA, uh, you've got a couple of choices. Um, my favorite is if you're using a uh, standard heat bed, uh, which is you've already got on the Vision 3D printers. They all come with it. Um, it's just straight mirrored glass. Uh, what you do, though, is that you can't put a lot of fingerprints on it. I almost never touch um, you know, any of the mirrored glass, and I certainly never touch it once I get it prepared for actually printing. Um, but what you do is... Uh, uh, clean it. Um, you're going to get a little bit of a bottle with uh, uh, basically a generic uh, ammonia glass cleaner and um, so long as it's got the ammonia in there that's the kind of glass cleaner you want. You just basically squirt it on there and you scrub it and for anything and everything that's on there has to go away so it better be perfectly clean. Good thing about a mirrored plate is um, to find out if it's clean all you have to do is look in it. So. Um, anyway, you clean it totally so that there's no smudges or anything left on it. And uh, anyway, 
for the purpose of this, a little bit of smudge is no big deal. Um, but uh, once you're printing, you don't want any fingerprints or anything. That's the other great thing about mirrored plates is that they show every little fingerprint. So anyway, but you would be good to go with printing with that if you use a heated plate. And uh, I generally print at around 40 to 45 degrees Celsius with mirrored plates. With glass, you have to heat it up to around 60 degrees Celsius. Um, and uh, uh, the printer will actually have all of its temperatures uh, in Celsius, not in Fahrenheit. So you might as well get used to it. That's just kind of the way the software works. And uh, it actually has a lot of really good benefits to go to the metric system. So anyway, so if you're using a heat plate, straight mirrored glass is the way to go. Uh, if you're not going to turn on the heat, and the reason that you wouldn't want to use a heat plate would be if you wanted to use lower power. Uh, you generate a little less than one-third the power uh, is what the rest of the machine um, would use versus having the heat bed on. So uh, if, you, um, you know, if you use the printer without the heat bed, uh, basically you're drawing no more than 5 amps ever uh, at 12 volts, so it's less than 60 watt light bulb. So uh, it's, it's kind of nice to know that 3D printers run really, really low uh, amount of power. Well, what I use for, um, you know, and what almost everyone uses for PLA plastic, not ABS, but PLA plastic, is blue paint painter's tape. And uh, what I'm providing you with is actually Scotch brand uh, from 3M painters tape and it doesn't get any better than this stuff. So uh, basically you set it down and you start off at one edge and uh, I usually tape a little bit to get started just on the, uh, the uh, table or the work surface that you have and you just keep rubbing it back and forth and uh, you go in a little bit at a time. And what you want to do is try and minimize the amount of reflection going through there. So if you're you get real good at it, eventually this line between the two uh, doesn't show up at all. What you don't want though is you don't want to overlap them because believe it or not just the thinness of the tape makes a big difference in the uh, ability of the PLA to actually hold and it's the difference between aggressively holding uh, that little piece or uh, totally missing it sometimes. So anyway, so you go ahead and you just stick these down, and the good news is that uh, blue painter's tape is very, very forgiving. Um, so you get a little bit of a, a slice or something like that, you just peel it back up, and you can redo it. And you know what? You don't even have to do the whole thing. It, it's like very flexible too. And so you get a little bit there, and you keep going all the way across till you get as much PLA tape as you need. to fill up the build surface. Uh, generally, I don't even fill up the whole thing uh, going across. And actually, uh, the way to do it um, more times than not is that I actually turn it the other way. I turn it the thin way because this stuff's just about two inches. It's not totally. And so by doing it the other way, um, you minimize the amount of sliver that's left over that doesn't have it. Truthfully, if you wanted to, you just go over the last little bit and you're good to go. Okay, so that's it taped. And then what I end up doing, um, if I am, if I've already set up the printer so that it is the exact Z height and all that, your your height really kind of matters. What you would do is just take a razor blade and uh, slice all the way around it. And there's your plate, okay? And you really want this tape to actually stick really, really, really well. Um, and so what I usually do is I take a really small part, like a PLA gear, and uh, I'll rub the whole thing back and forth. And what that does is it, ke it keeps a very good adhesion, especially the seams in between, because that's the last thing you want is it to pop up when you're actually trying to peel up the parts. But that's how you do blue tape. The other thing I do, uh, more times than not, what I will do is I will actually wrap, um, you know, I'll go through and slice like a quarter inch or a half inch way, and then I'll actually wrap 
it around on the back side of this and that way it actually helps hold especially if you get parts out here on the end uh, it helps keeps the PLA plate down a little bit better and uh, there you go so that's the probably the most popular way that people print PLA because there are an awful lot of printers that are made that can't um, uh, do heat beds or don't do heat beds anything from like the Tantalus or the Ultimaker um, the Print XL uh, there's just a lot of printers um, originally they didn't even come with heat beds so like two or three years ago and so it's kind of a nice option though uh, because uh, without a heat bed there's uh, less than no way that you're going to be able to print ABS uh, polycarbonate or any other material that we move to so um, anyway so there's uh, second most uh, second way that I print and the second way to print PLA okay now we're going to move to ABS. If you're going to do ABS, you still start off with a glass plate. And once you have your glass plate, then next up, uh, you clean it with uh, um, the Windex cleaner, uh, glass generic, you know, ammonia-based cleaner. You get it really, really clean. And then uh, what I'm including with the kits is kept on tape. And so it's kind of a yellowish, orangish, brownish kind of color. And capped on tape is used in the electrical industry really widely because it's uh, uh, not only electrically resistant, but it's a very high heat material. And so what you want to do is you want to peel it off, and you see it kind of has like a yellowish um, uh, kind of uh, look to it. And especially with this kind of tape, because it's a little more expensive um, than just regular PLA, you want to orient the plate so that you have the thinnest way side to side as you're actually going to tape and you want the fewest runs of this as you can um, if, especially if you buy like you can buy kept on tape that's like four inches wide uh, it's a little more difficult to actually put four inch wide stuff on than it is to put um, you know inch and a half you know 40 millimeter stuff so I'm providing the 40 millimeter stuff just because uh, it's it's easier for most people to be able to put down so what I usually do with that is that once I get it all done you know I get it all cleaned off and then uh, once you wipe it down uh, even after you put the Windex and you don't want to touch the plate so don't touch the plate at all okay because anything fingerprints have a slight little amount of oil uh, or moisture or anything and you don't want anything to affect the adhesion of the tape to the surface so what we're going to do is start off with one side and that's the problem with capped on tape is that it's easy to actually tear like that um, and so you got to be a little more cautious with this um, but the really good news is that ABS sticks fantastic to this stuff 